front lines of COVID-19, just really starting to integrate your big acquisition of Aetna. Why now? Well, Sarah, this leadership transition, it does come at the right time for CVS Health. Uh, this month marks our two-year anniversary of CVS and Aetna coming together as one company. And I could not be prouder of the work of the organization over the last two years. Uh, you know, the integration activities are complete. Uh, the company is operating uh, as one company uh, with an enterprise lens. And I, I think the big news today on the earnings call is you know, the transformation foundation has been laid. And we had many examples that we talked about today of new and innovative products and services coming to life in, in very meaningful ways. And, you know, in, in many respects, uh, being part of the solution as we attack uh, the COVID virus. And yeah, I couldn't be happier in the board's decision to uh, named Karen Lynch as my replacement. Karen and I have worked together for the last two plus years. And, uh, you know, she's a get it done person. And, you know, she's got a proven track record of driving growth and innovation. And, you know, I am very confident in her capabilities to lead the company in, in, in its next phase of growth. But she does come from the Aetna side of things, the insurance part of the business, which, which I think is key for investors, Larry. Do you feel like you get enough credit for, for buying this company and for owning an insurance company from Wall Street. There were big questions uh, several months ago about the strategy, and it's still not 100 percent visibility about insurance policies coming out of Washington. Well, you know, Sarah, I, I, I do believe that, you know, for the reasons that we were just talking about, you know, the strategy, you know, is being validated with our results, uh, seven consecutive quarters of you know, uh, meeting and beating expectations, you know, and the fact that, you know, we're really defining what omni-channel for health, you know, really means in our country. And, you know, the need to meet people where they are, whether it's in the community, in their home, or in the palm of their hand. And, you know, if I told you a year ago that, you know, six million people uh, would travel to a CVS pharmacy for uh, a diagnostic test for a virus, uh, you know, many would roll their eyes, but the reality is in, you know, seven short months, that's exactly what happened. And, you know, we're testing about 70,000 people, you know, each and every day for the virus and, you know, uh, representing our ability to be an important part of the solution in, you know, addressing the challenges associated with COVID. But, you know, what that even means in a post-COVID world, the fact that, you know, uh, individuals all around the country can, you know, can seek care in what many would describe as non-traditional care settings. Uh, Larry, to what extent are those 70,000 tests a day, 6 million in total, been helping to drive sales in, in your pharmacies of, uh, of more regular everyday items? I know some of them uh, are taking place in, in the car parks, but uh, is it driving traffic into the stores as well? Yeah, Wolf, it's a great question. And, you know, all of that testing is being done from outside the store environment through our drive through locations. Uh, so it really hasn't had uh, any impact in, in terms of our you know, in-store sales. What's interesting about what we have seen is 70%, you know, of those customers have not used CVS in the past for their prescription needs. So we do think there is a, an opportunity to, you know, engage these customers in a, in a different way and, you know, make them long-term CVS customers. You've also signed on to help distribute the vaccine when and if it comes. Larry, what, what's the plan? How is that going to work? And is it going to be orderly? Well, it absolutely is orderly. We have been, you know, very impressed with, you know, the work of Operation Warp Speed. And, you know, we have been participants in the various task forces. And, you know, you saw the announcement where we were selected to be, you know, one of the partners, uh, you know, in terms of distributing the vaccine to long-term care facilities, uh, you know, addressing some of all our most vulnerable populations. And, you know, we have been doing a lot of planning uh, around that. Uh, you know, there are some additional complexities with a COVID vaccine, uh, you know, as we sit here today from a handling, a storage requirement, and the fact that, you know, most of the vaccines that are in clinical trial uh, will require a booster shot and, you know, the complexity associated with that. So, you know, our team has done a wonderful job from a planning point of view and, you know, and, uh, you know, when uh, a vaccine is approved, we absolutely are going to be ready to mobilize our forces, continuing to be part of that solution. Larry, we are, of course, uh, still awaiting the result of uh, the election. But uh, if uh, the winner wants to expand health care coverage, do you think that that comes with a trade-off for the private sector, the sort of profit margins you're able to make? 
Well, well, it, it's a great question. And uh, look, I, I, I think, uh, you know, the private sector has demonstrated its role in our country in terms of, you know, the ability to innovate and, and the role of competition in the private sector. And, you know, what we have seen through COVID is many examples of, you know, public-private partnerships at a federal level, at a state level, at a community level. And, you know, we have been proud to be able to be you know, part of that solution. And, you know, as we think about the role that, you know, that we're playing in healthcare, you know, I, I firmly believe that, you know, the model that we have built, this omni-channel for health, uh, being in the community, in the home, in the palm of your hand, you know, we will be there to be part of that solution. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.